Welcome to this video podcast from the International Al Jolson Society. Starting as an audio podcast in 2007, this is a look into the works and legacy of the world's greatest entertainer, Al Jolson. An unrivaled star of stage, screen, and recording, his influences are felt even today, more than 60 years after his passing. George Jessel is the featured guest on this week's Al Jolson podcast from the Shell Chateau broadcast of August the 3rd, 1935. In this excerpt from the one-hour radio show, you'll hear Al Jolson sing two songs and a classic comedy routine and song by the Toastmaster General himself, George Jessel. For comedy, we have George Jessel, that very great comedian, and I might add that George is one of the finest after-dinner speakers in America today. As Georgie himself would tell you, he has made so many speeches that all you have to do is show him half a grapefruit and he gets up and talks. <laughs> well, when he came to Shell Chateau this afternoon, I wanted to have a little talk with Georgie. For old time's sake, I have known him for years. So we went to a restaurant here in the neighborhood and we had a sandwich and a cup of coffee. And was I embarrassed? I felt in my pocket and I realized I had no money with me. Of course, I didn't want Georgie to pay for it. I wasn't trying to out fumble him. I really didn't have any money. So I explained to the cashier. He said, if you have no money with you, don't worry. It's all right. I'll just write your name on the wall. And I said, listen, I wouldn't want people to see my name on the wall. He said, don't worry, they won't. Your coat will be hanging on it. (laughs) And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, a little song that is fast becoming the hit of the season. A song from that grand picture, Broadway Gondolier, sung so marvelously by Dick Powell, the rose in her hair. Hit it, Victor. Love is a rose, and it grows like a rose. I found a rose nestled in someone's hair. Sweet was the rose, and never a maid was so fair. In her eyes there was moonlight And a rose in her hair In my arms there was no one So I just put her there On her lips was a promise In my heart was a prayer When I finally went I went home with a scent Of the rose in her hair Love was in blue in the gloom of the night. Bright was the moon on the night we were there. Love was in blue, and so was the rose in her hair. In her eyes there was moonlight. And a rose in her hair In my arms there was no one So I just put her there On her lips was a promise In my heart Was a prayer When I finally went I went home with a scent Of the rose in her hair This evening is a young man who needs no introduction to you folks in Shell Chateau. For that matter, any place where there are better going people in the United States. You've heard him on the radio, seen him on the stage and in pictures, and you certainly know his mama. He's one of the world's smartest comedians, and it's a pleasure to welcome him to Shell Chateau tonight. Georgie Jessel. <laughs> Gentlemen, Albertina, it's a great pleasure to be on this radio program and to tell you the honest truth. It's a great pleasure to be on any radio program. What's you <laughs> What's you telling any lie? You know, things haven't been as tasty in my business as they might be. You know, of course you read in the columnists about actors how well they're doing. I read it myself only two or three months ago. Jessel, there's a lucky fella. He married a rich actress and bought a diamond ring for ten thousand. 
Who had that kind of money? Well, I bought a little ring, and I'm taking care of it as I go along. That's all about it. I read about a week ago here in the paper. It says Jessel has finally landed himself a fine job at Hollywood. He's uh, an executive at one of the larger motion picture studios. It's a little exaggerated, the executive. I got a little job and uh, an office. They didn't give me anything yet. After three months, I'll get an office. And uh, after three months, my contract is over. So you can't figure on anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I have had a most interesting time here in California. I came here originally to play a week's engagement at one of the theaters downtown. No need to mention the name because why should the Shell Company advertise the Paramount? <laughs> However, it was the most interesting engagement, as I said. I went down there, and of course, the advertising sort of disturbed me for a moment. As I came in on the marquee above the theater, it said, This week, Georgie Jessel, next week, less miserable. But, um. <laughs> but it was really very, very nice and interesting because we played six shows a day. And finally, after two or three days, uh, I mean, I got all mixed up. You know what I mean? I started to feel like that girl in the picture. You possibly saw the motion picture, Private World, where the girl is a little bit, you know, and she comes in and she says, I'm Carrie Flint, I've come to see I'm Carrie Flint, I've come to see you. That's how I felt with the six shows. I'm Georgie Jessel, I'm on again. I'm Georgie Jessel, I'm on again. <laughs> we had a splendid time, though, and I was kept over for, uh, well, they extended the engagement uh, for the second week. They announced it that way. I had the contract for two weeks originally, but... Uh, <laughs> The second week, we had a grand time. We had 300 children, a kiddie show. 300 children and 1,200 mothers. <laughs> I never saw so many relations in my life, you know? And kids all over. You come to the dressing room, open up a can of cold cream, three children jumped out, you know? But it was interesting talking to the children, children of all different nationalities, you know, and all kinds. I got to talking to a couple little of the Jewish children for the novelty of the thing. And, um, well, it is a novelty because the children out here, I find, uh, are named differently than most of the same type of children that we have in the East, you know, where I live in New York. I mean, most of the kids are named after their biblical forefathers. Here, it's a little bit different. I said to one child, what's your name, Sonny? He said, Sinclair is my name. Sinclair Rosenberg is my name. <laughs> and this is my boyfriend, the Whit Clinton Sink. <laughs> so I got friendly with all the youngsters, and one afternoon following one of the performances, I was in the dressing room, two little fellas in there, and the mother of one of these children was calling him, say, Cornelius. But Cornelius evidently didn't hear his mother. Another kid had to nudge him. Say, stunk, your mama wants you. <laughs> But really, the theaters out here, I mean, are different, as I say, from the ones we have in New York. I, uh, I played an engagement at the theater on Broadway some months ago, a motion picture theater. They begin at 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, what kind of customers are you going to get at 9 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> well, till you come out, you look through the wings, and the entire audience consists of traveling salesmen. You know what I mean? They've been up about an hour. They couldn't sell anything. They come in the theater, put their samples under the seat, and make faces at the actors all afternoon. <laughs> It hurts them because we're working, you know what I mean? <laughs> then about 12 o'clock, the ladies come. Of course, the ladies, they don't come either to see the picture or the play. Their main object in life is to save a seat for a friend. That's all they care. <laughs> and that procedure is followed in this manner. The lady generally comes with her husband's hat. That's the idea, huh? Puts the hat on the seat to her right or left, and you come in, you want to sit down. Well, up, but my husband, he just, he'll be back in a minute, you know? But it's interesting, and it's good for an actor to play that type of theater, particularly in these drastic days of the drama. Because you play four or five or maybe six times a day, and it keeps you mentally alert. You've got to think of new jokes at every performance, because you're working for the same people all day. <laughs> of that type of theater painter. She goes in, and once she's in, she stays the whole season. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's a remarkable thing about her, as it happens. I mean, I say this with no ulterior motive, because uh, I got the job, but I mean, she is the most ardent Jolson fan. Remembers all his plays and his pictures and listens to his programs, but, and loves his songs, but has no idea about uh, committing a melody to her brain. You know, there are some people that... For instance, I dined at this aunt's house, and she was characteristically humming a song to herself, you know? Cocktails for two. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this time, 
A popular song called It's Easy to Remember But So Hard to Forget. Victor, uh, just a, a more note of instruction. I mean, make out I'm not singing. Just make out it's still Al and play it, you know, his way. Go ahead, if you please. <laughs> With you, I own the earth. With you, I rule creation. No, you. And what's it worth? Life is just an imitation. That sweet expression I see before me, the way you look when a weaver. It's easy to remember, but it's so hard to forget. I hear you whisper, I'll always love you. I know it's over, and yet it's easy to remember, but it's so hard to forget. And so I dream, I feel your arms caress me. Fingers press me tight. I'd rather dream than have that lonely feeling stealing through the night. That one clear moment is there before me, and though it brings me regret, it's easy to remember, but so hard to forget. I love this song. I tell you why. It's got a nice, sentimental, old-fashioned sway to it. The kind of song that I used to sing when I was a little fellow with Gusset. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, in those days, the songs had ever so much more sentiment and deep feeling than the ones they're writing today. I don't know if you sang a love song. By gosh, you know it was a love song by its title. I can't tell why I love you, but I do. I'll be with you when the roses bloom again. Will you love me in December as you do in May? Love song. Today, the love songs are... I want to go back to Chakamahaka, Hawaii. Two cigarettes in the dark, and I'm out in the cold again. Uh. Looka, looka, looky, here comes Cookie. The songs had so much heart, so much feeling. Well, of course, nearly everything seems to have changed since I was a little fella. Even the kids are different. Children haven't got that same sweet, childly simplicity they used to have. The kid is born, it leaves its cradle, and it's a grown-up before you know it. It forgets the springtime of its youth almost immediately. I remember around Christmas time, you say to some little fellow, Well, sonny boy, soon the Christmas will be here. And then, what do you want Santa Claus to put in your stocking on Christmas morning? And the child would wistfully answer, Well, sir, a toy drum, a soldier coat, a baseball glove, some sweet childish fancy. I got a nephew, six years old. I said to him this Christmas, well, Sonny, what do you want Santa Claus to put in your stocking? He says, Joan Blondell. <laughs> That's a little man, it's and though it brings me regret, it's easy to remember George, and I hope your three months at the Fox Studio become three years. And, I... and if you're a lucky fella, they might change your name, you know what I mean, in front of the studio to J. Throckmorton, Zanuck, Sheehan, Skank, Jessel. <laughs> I hope you folks remember a couple of weeks ago, I sang a song of Paul Dresser's called My Gal Cal. And a beautiful song it was, too. At that time, I said that I thought Paul Dresser's name would live forever because of that one song. Tonight, I would like to sing a song written by another American composer who will never be forgotten. His name is Ethelbert Nevin. And I don't think I'll have to tell you the name of the song, but I might as well so Victor can play it. Mighty Like a Rose. <laughs> Oh, 
shiny blue Maybe you think that a heaven is a coming close to you When he's a dark asleep in his little place Because he This entire radio program is available on the website of the International Al Jolson Society, www.jolson.org. That's J-O-L-S-O-N dot O-R-G. Along with many other radio shows, Jolson recordings, video clips, and information about the world's greatest entertainer. Be sure to visit the site and listen for the next podcast. As Al Jolson said... In the words he made famous, You ain't heard nothing yet.